All right, so this is my final update for my CEP 810 network learning project. My goal for this was to utilize online sources such as YouTube and help forums to help me to learn make and bake homemade banana bread. So these are the ingredients that I utilize. This is based off of a recipe from a YouTube video from Datev Gallagher. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. I also saw a recipe from All Recipes and they used double the amount of bananas I used. I used three. They used around six. So if you want a banana bread with a lot of banana flavor, you can go ahead and use that recipe. I also saw a baking forums post with a recipe, but they were similar to the two YouTube videos I found. And the YouTube videos gave me a more visual follow along representation than the help forum did. So I found YouTube videos to be my go-to source for this project. The rubber made container in the back that contains flour. So these were the ingredients minus the three bananas. So for the bananas, I found it easier to mash the more ripe they were. So the more ripe the banana is, the softer it will be and the easier it is to mash. You can use a potato masher. I went ahead and used a fork, whichever one is better for you. So the reason why I also chose the Datev Gallagher recipe was because the recipe was for two loaves instead of one and I wanted to focus on one. It also made me relate to when my chemistry students do stoichiometry, aka unit conversions. So that way they can use the chemical equation. So essentially any recipe is a chemical equation to adjust the amounts accordingly so that everything reacts and you have nothing left over. So I definitely am looking forward to using this method of learning with my students. Instead of just using a simple Google search, it gives them a more visual hands-on learning experience. And for a science teacher, you're always looking for more hands-on experiences. So when I went ahead and mixed all of these ingredients together with my bananas, also adding the flour in one third at a time so it's easier to mix, your batter ends up looking like this. So when I made my first loaf of banana bread, I thought there was something missing, so I found a YouTube video from Crouton Cracker Jacks that recommend adding a half cup of walnuts to the batter and do that at the very end. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to stir it all in making sure that it is as evenly mixed as possible. Again, everything is to your own liking, whether what consistency you need is up to you. So as far as baking the banana bread, the oven is currently preheating to 350 degrees, and it's going to take about an hour, an hour, five minutes to bake. So over here I have my loaf pan sitting on a cookie sheet, and as far as greasing up the loaf pan, I started out with butter since that's what all the videos and help forums were using, but the butter didn't really work out that well, so I switched to Pam nonstick cooking spray, and that worked a lot better. So currently, my loaf pan has been panned up, so what I'm going to do for you now is pour the batter into the loaf pan. So reset my camera. So I'm going to be using the spatula to go ahead and guide the batter into my loaf pan, getting as much of the batter out of the bowl as I possibly can. And I want to make sure that the top of it is smoothed out so that way it bakes a little bit easier. In order to know when you're done, you can use the toothpick test or you can just use a fork. So you take a toothpick or a small fork when it's taken out of the oven, put it through the center of the banana bread take it out. If the toothpick or fork comes out clean, you are good to go. If it does not come out clean, that is an indication as to if you need to cook it longer. So that's my batter in there. And what we are going to do now is we are going to go ahead and put it in my oven. I'm going to be putting it on the top rack. And once it is all done, in true Food Network fashion, I have a finished banana bread right over here. And I went ahead and put a slice out for everyone to see. So overall, I really learned a lot from this experience. I really look forward to using this with my students, especially, like I said, with my chemistry classes, because this relates to one of our standards that we cover in the class. It's a great little experience. It gave me a lot more experience with technology and it allows us as teachers to integrate more technology as we enter deeper and deeper into the digital age of learning. So I really learned a lot. Let me know if you have any questions and I encourage you to check out my previous video on this and my blog posts. Thanks.